question, how can academic institutions better prepare students for the challenges and expectations of their industry?
and excel. In the world politics, if you solely rely on the knowledge that lecturers uh, impart on you on campus, it, it, it will never be enough. It will never be enough. So from the one, either you identify a two that you uh, find it interesting, and then you, you, you do more to learn by yourself to get a lot of knowledge in there. So, I was fortunate, but you can go that I'm fortunate. I was fortunate to study outside for my undergrad. And I can tell you for a fact that the only reason that I agree, my mother managed to convince me to go outside was because she said if I didn't get out of it. I was one of those very obnoxious young men. If, if I don't understand, the class doesn't move forward. But it was so bad, even outside, the teacher had thrown a, a marker for that bad year, because I needed to understand. But I was, the reason I said fortunate is because I had this one professor who taught us programming before we started programming. And what he did was he taught us how to program. He didn't teach us a language. So that's what the first difference was. So right now, if I need to program, all I need to know is understand the syntax. I understand what it means to program. What your job is in school, is to learn how to understand what technology is, not to concentrate on different technologies. But the truth is, a lot of the technologies that can be taught now may be irrelevant by the time you get out. The rate at which things are changing. So we need to understand, for example, that if you deal with data, data has to be stored somewhere, right? You need to understand that technology has to be contextual. It's not meant to replace a lifestyle. So instead of looking at, oh, what is trending in the US, we need to be very careful because guess what? One day we're going to wake up and realize that everybody's migrated there, but the real business is here. Okay? So what you need to be thinking about if you want to think in the next 5, 10, 15, 20 years is how do we create systems that are cultural? Okay? How do we create systems that are for Ghana? All right? Um, the other thing, the other issue is you also need to, the things that, you know, I've seen a lot of your challenges, but the beauty of the challenges are they are also the opportunity to solve solutions, right? So you don't have a computer, so what do you do? Internet is not reliable, so what do you do, right? I happen to work at Control and Content Development Department, and I can now have the bragging right of saying I was the first person that developed an Xbox, okay? In a place like the US where things work, one person is going to understand the right thing to because things are so structured. But here, because of the lack, we have the opportunity. I also saw a first national bureau, which was heavily customized because it wasn't built for this market. And so the guys that worked on it started knowing how to do things that when the consultants came up, they didn't know how to do because they had never built the system to work on it. That is the advantage here. So my three things I'll tell you to focus on as opposed to the disparity in the industry. One, learn how to think like a technologist. Two, volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. Like you were saying, you know how to do something small and next thing you have to charge you for trouble. Don't do that. Don't do that. Volunteer to be a master in what you do. Because guess what? I don't care how much society advances, the rule is still the same in the survival of the business. And it's the best among the ones who do the job. So if you spend your time here volunteering and getting the experience, then when you come out, there's a lot more that you can be paid for. Now, in terms of the question, the disparity between um, industry and academia, there's a lot of disparities. But in the past, what has happened is we are looking to the academ academia to invite industry to come and share with students. But it's a wrong approach because a lot of times I can get to have the resources to be teaching the industry. But what industry needs to understand is these of us are complaining all the time, we're not getting enough students, we're not getting good students, we're not getting this, because we do do a lot of complaining, especially business owners. We should rather pump resource into change the done and say we want to be involved. Okay, programs like this, engagements like that, consistently, so that every time you're learning, you understand the context. So, your
stuff you put down, what I'm going to do is immediately I go back and I type it up. All the people in my Testament group, I'm sharing with them that these are what you guys are saying. And that they need to now think about how to ensure that the next three, four, five years, the quality of those of people who are coming out are what we want. I really like groups, so the first group has already taken it. Let me just add on to what Papa just okay. said. So, um, yes, uh, IT, I mean, industry and academia differ, right? However, in the developed countries, these two suggest work together to build their nations. Uh, for instance, in the past, relational databases could do everything, right? Then, then big data came. Now there, were, there was a volume, huge data, okay, we're coming in very fast and all that. Our uh, relational databases management could not handle these. So what happened? The industry relied or fell on the academia so that they researched into, you know, I mean, coming up innovating, coming up with tools such as the Hadoop, Apache Stack and all that to be able to handle the big data management. So as much as we think about the difference between industry and academia, we also have to bear in mind that these two go in tandem. We, we go hand in hand. To, to build a, a, an innovation type of system very well. So uh, to develop our country, we need industry. The industry equally needs academia to develop the country. Okay, so thank you very much. Dr. Uh, Aaron, I remember when you were talking, you said you were learning to just pass the examination. <laughs> and my question is based on the fact that now in the industry, if you are about to um, get for the position or apply for the position, they ask for experience and everything. They tell you you have three years experience and so many other things. What are some of the things you can tell the students to do in order to act like the school, in order that as soon as they finish or complete education, they can qualify for those things? Because they ask for three years experience. Okay. Um, my time at the university, we I had my first computer in level 300. I'm not that old. So in level 100, 200, we're basically writing codes, Pascal, C++, on pieces of papers, and uh, we were very hectic to 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 really develop the code on a piece of paper. Now things have changed. We we barely had internships. We during my four years on campus, we never had a seminar where we were for actually the privilege to uh, interact with industry players. So the only difference now between you guys and my time is you are fortunate to interact with the industry players. So as much as possible, uh, do internships. Right. Uh, just apply and write a lot of letters if you don't have any sources or if you don't have any links, just apply. You may never know where your life will shine. So as, as much as possible during your long vacations, the two months, three months, have intentions. If, even if it's a, a small firm, just go there, learn with the tools they do, learn the tools they use and then perfect it. And uh, when seminars are organized, please participate. Our, our, our distinguished guests uh, sacrificed five hours to come and be with us. It, it, it's only fair we also uh, show the same respect and communicate with them. At the end of the day, these two guests here may even include some of you. You may never know, just one or two people, but then that's how you build your networks from them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. I think, I think what I uh, said earlier, volunteer. I mean, you may not get a structured internship, but be hungry to volunteer. Even if you don't have to do two lines of food, bet, and I think ten lines of food, figure it out. People are more likely to give you a shot if you're volunteering and you're not paying for it than if they have to pay for it. But every time a business has to pay, they have to justify a cost. But if you can get it for free, they'll give you a spot. The thing is, every business knows that if you're good, 
But we're just trying to do this. You're good. The next thing is, I'm not letting you go. I don't want to let you go together. So then you get yourself into the problem. So volunteer like you're mad. Okay, the second thing is relationships. Build relationships. They are so key. I currently run a program called uh, Money. I know the name is that good. But it's a uh, minimum development system relationship. And what I do is, I actually sign a 20 year contract. I sign a 20 year contract with people in level 100. If any of you went level 100, you can apply. And the idea behind it is, I'm signing an agreement to mentor them for the next 20 years. And what we do is every Saturday, virtually, we invite resources like these and they come and engage them on Zoom for two hours. And the plan is that when they go to the next level, they can also recruit two people, two people and so forth and so on. And a lot of my friends in the industry are excited about this because everybody's looking for people that are getting different experiences, right? Beyond even different technology. So things like work ethic, things like um, you know, writing a CD right, and things like that, not this kind of opportunity. So you want to make sure that you're building relationships. In fact, everybody should try to get the guest number before she leaves here. I hope you took it. And make sure you're maintaining those relationships and we'll open doors for you. I have somebody who did an internship with me when I was in foreign affairs in my department for at the age of 18. She currently is working at Goldman Sachs. Then another lady that I also met with a she was 17 when I met her. Also found a way networking business relations for her to Goldman Sachs. The interesting thing is the older one calls me and says, I'm supposed to mentor this lady called Exiva. I think she's one of your children. And I said, oh yeah, she is. So that, now she's also looking out for her in the UK. So relationships will open crazy doors for you if you maintain them well. Thank you. Thank you very much. And how many of you have been pretentious? How do you students build professional relationships during the internships? And then uh, how can they maybe do their best or stand out during the internships? How do you go about it? Those things make a huge difference. And especially in this time 
where a lot of people have said it's unprofessionalism. When you're professional, stand out like a sword. Okay? Dress it right, being polite, addressing the person politely. Once somebody has given you, and all the person giving you permission to call them by their first name, don't rush to do it. Okay? You will see the numbers will not be as nice as you think. Okay? And that can go against you. Um, I don't want to stay under promise, but focus more on over deliver. Okay? So if you say I can do one, the next day, make sure it comes to two. Right? If you say I can do four, make sure the next day gets eight. And if you have to stay out to do it, get it done. Because once you consistently over deliver, you build a brand and you become, you build scarcity. You see what I'm saying? Find, like I told you already, learn how to communicate. Because it's only when you know how to communicate that you can communicate frankly without disrespecting people. And the reason I'm saying that is if you are interning and all they are using you for is buying YG, <laughs> you should know how to politely communicate that, oh, please. I want to learn to so help me get babies. I'm not saying the watch is bad, but you know, I don't know how many of you watch uh, these old Chinese movies. Sometimes to learn the Kung Fu, you have to send the master. So I don't say that they're bad, but you need to make sure that at some point there's relevance. Okay? If you see Karate Kid, work so, work so. You know, make sure that that one thing you're selling, interpret, you can buy it, interpret to some work ethic that you can help. And you should ask questions. So, Oh, today I want to work tomorrow. What is it? I want to work today. What do I want to do? I wanted to learn how to school. That's you know politely like we will just eventually help you to school. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to be But I'm trying to politely to let them know that you really want them to help. Like you really want them to support you. And no matter who, eventually you will solve it and find ways to support you. Yeah, but know how to play the, the, the game. You have to learn to play the game. Be polite and humble. Be consistent. And about all, be resilient. That is so key. Be resilient. I used to have this relationship with my boss one of the issues, right? He was, he was about to retire. And sometimes when people are about to retire, they play the safe card. So, you know, I have a few months to retire. I don't want to work with goals. So, a lot of things that if you want to do them and they are a bit out of the way, they say no because they don't want to work with goals. They want to stay safe. What I used to do is I have this philosophy that everything you want in life is about to work with. Okay? So if my world power is stronger than yours, then I'm going to get what I want. But if your world power is stronger than mine, I'm not going to get it. Now, whether you like it or not, from trying to find someone to get married to, to trying to sell, it's always about our wills. Whoever to you know is stronger or yes is stronger, with you will agree. So don't take it personal if you hear no. Just make up your mind that. I'm going to sleep at tomorrow I'm going to go to it. And what I used to do with him is, we tell you, oh, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. Two hours time. It's okay, yes, sir. Two hours time, I'll be there. Oh, let's do it tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'll be there. By the time I go there five, six times, you will agree. Because I've decided that I'm going to keep being resilient and resilient. And as a young person, you should have like 5,000 more resilience than me, the older I've been. Seriously, because I mean, yeah, you need your time. So these are the things that you do and you're intentional about. And you will build that professional relationship so people will remember that you're different, that you do what nobody else will do. Can I add one more question? Can I add one more question? Sure. Apologies. Just one more point. I just thought about um, look for opportunities to improve the business that you're volunteering for without them asking you. If you see a hole somewhere, patch it, or at least give them a, hey, I built this thing. I think it's going to help with. X, Y, Z. I've been here long enough. I see what's happening. I see there's, you know, y'all are having a struggle with this. I can help that. I can build this technology piece. And now here it is. Let me show you what it is. And then once you show them, most of the time that will also open up more doors and say, hey, this person's serious. This person's here to help me with, with this company. So that would be another good thing. Um, finally, to add up to what you said, um, now, to, to, to separate the men from the boys, look, look up on the internet for 21st century skills. Now, these skills will, will, will help you and shape you at your job basis. Uh, so, Papa has batteries on communication and, and lots of the skills. Now, look them up and uh, practice and learn them very well.
the interface that you still they'll help you. Alright, thank you very much. And with what you said, I think this country at times they make the errors too much. The bike of the watch. <laughs> It comes to much more than the way. <laughs> okay, so our next question. How can academic institutions better prepare students for the challenges and expectations of their industry? So, Dr. Arina, you can answer that. Um, so, basically, we've talked about most of the answers to this question. Internships. So, we, uh, the lecturers will have to do a part by communicating the industry and finding new slots at their companies and then some of you have the internships there. Uh, we have to encourage and support such seminars, such talks, invite a lot of industry players to come and talk with you, share their experiences. I'm not from the industry so I may not know much about the challenges of the industry but if we are able to organize such seminars once, as, once every semester I think the students will be well educated and well prepared for the industry. Uh, I think I think just living life right now and probably having some of you know people in your family that work at these institutions and businesses, and you probably hear them complain a lot, or you complain a lot about you know some something that you see. Take that to class. Ask if you you can build something in class as a group activity that could be beneficial to the industry or society at large for you all. So I, I know there's some things that you all are like, I wish this was better. I wish we could, ex you know, this, we could. I had an idea the other day about um, all the different shops. A lot of them don't have websites, but like in the States, there's these things called food trucks and they drive around to different buildings and then they'll sit and wait for people to come to them. But first, you just had to know where the food truck was going to be. After a while, they all got smart and they developed apps. And now their app will tell you where that food truck is at that given time and what food they have on it, what's available. So you don't go there asking for chicken wings and they are all out. All out. <laughs> you know what's there and you know where to find them. So that type of thing, if you are hearing these problems, you could possibly take those to class and build it as a class activity. And that would give you some actual, real, real world, hands-on um, <laughs> skills, some experience there. Okay. Um, I want to put one last thing on this question. One point I forgot. Uh, Papa himself is a mentor to an elderly person. We all need mentors. So right from this place, please identify mentors and associate yourself with them. And let them, let them prove you, let them prove you for preparing you for the world. Maybe that just made me hungry because uh, anybody who knows me knows I love chicken wings. I just have to mention chicken wings. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, please repeat after me. I eat problems for breakfast. Now say it louder. I eat problems for breakfast. And that should be your attitude. That should be your attitude. You should love problems. Because you know what? Anybody who loves problems doesn't go hungry. Because problems are always where innovation happens, and that's where opportunity stays. So, getting to this mentality of eating problems for breakfast, always looking for problems. I mean, I love the sheets because this tells me there's a lot of opportunity, and that's what you should always be looking for. The second thing that I hope our professors will do more of, which I think are the basic geography of school, if you don't get anything else, is how to. That's really what you should get for communication. How to think. Critical thinking skills, technology thinking skills, um, environment thinking skills. Once you get that, you set yourself apart. Because you really think about it. The yeah, brilliant coders is probably in this room, but why is it that all our government systems are uh, things that are important? Why don't we have enough local made solutions? Running the country. These are things you should be asking to solve. And, and think about how much is being paid in license and fees. And ask yourself, would I not want a piece of that? Those are the questions you should be asking. And myself, I'll be using to start collaborating because everybody.
you keep building, you need to go to a business, how to perform, how to team, how to work with them to see things in your life. It sounds so weird. Most of us are getting to school, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, name them. Just like, so start now. Eat those problems, start building those solutions, and you get ready for the industry. And if the industry is not ready for you, guess what? You recreate or refashion the industry and start hiring your employees. Right?